So the next thing that we're going to talk about, um, the new thing that we're going to talk about today, are valence electrons. Now, I'm sure you're kind of wondering, well, with we'll shrug shoulders, what's that? Well, if we compare valence electrons to, let's say, a pizza, there's pepperonis, but then there's also the crust. Now, no matter how big or small the pizza is, the crust is always on the outside. That's the same thing we're talking about with valence electrons. So if we talk about um, another atom, for instance, beryllium, which is the example we used earlier, we have four total electrons, but how many valence electrons do we have? That's right, two, because two are on the very outside of it. Now I know what you're thinking, great, I have to draw out the atom every single time I want to find valence electrons. But if you get to a huge atom that has a lot of shells, then it gets to be very difficult. Well, there was a Russian scientist, hopefully you remember his name, that developed the periodic table. His name was Dmitry Mendeleev. And when he developed the periodic table, every element had its place. Without it being in its place, it wouldn't make sense. So there were many different reasons for him doing this, much like the pieces of a puzzle. Every piece of the puzzle has its place to make up the whole thing. If there's a piece missing, you would know. Same thing with the periodic table. He arranged it in that specific way. So when we're talking about the periodic table, it goes by groups. So everything in the first column has one valence electron. Everything in the second column has two valence electrons. We skip the transition metals. Then we go to group 13. You just cross out the one in front of it. So that one has three. Then group 14 has four. Group 15 has five. And then group 16 has six. Group 17 has seven and group 18 has 8. So depending on what element the or what group the element is in, you can determine how many valence electrons is in that element. 